God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Good morning. morning. How's everybody doing on this fine Sunday morning? Good, 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 good. Got a few announcements this morning. First off, I want to thank you for being here. If you're visiting with us, we're so glad you're here. Uh, I would say let us give you a handshake or a hug before you leave, but we'll just do it by air. Is that right, Lee? That's how we do it this service. Now, next service, if you, if you come in next service, and we can, we can handshake and hug if that's what you want to do. So. Uh, but right now we'll do what we got to do. A couple things I wanted to uh, to get with you this morning. I was handed a uh, a card a few minutes ago by Chris James, uh, and and this is from uh, Alice, his wife, says Bria family. Thank you all so much for all the calls, food uh, that was prepared for us, gift cards, and most of all the prayers. I feel so blessed to have all of you in my life. Much love, Miss Alice. And I think she's here this morning. I saw her walk in. Yeah, so she's she's here with us. So we're glad you're feeling better. Glad you're back. A um, couple other things. Many of you guys have been involved in the, in the Maggie Project uh, that uh, Mr. Butch Reed kind of head up, I guess, over the last few years. That's going on again, okay? If you want to help, this flyer is going to be in the back. I'm going to set it back here in the back after the second service today, okay? Uh, and it will explain. If you've been involved with it before, you'll know what to do, what to include, that kind of stuff. But he's got to have this stuff back by Sunday, August 16th. That's the deadline. So we wanted to announce that this morning. We'll hand that out, or that'll be back there for you guys to look at. Okay? Don't forget, there was a little uh, mess up in the bulletin this, or this weekend. Uh, there will be no evening services tonight. Okay? The bulletin said we were going to, but there's not. There will be no evening services tonight because the bathroom renovation is going to start as soon as the second service is over this morning, okay? So no services tonight. Um, Braden wanted me to make sure and announce that uh, they'll be having a scavenger hunt for TNT this week on Tuesday night from 6 to 8. So come ready to have fun with that. Also, the Wednesday night Devo will be from 6.30 to 7.30 in the youth room. And parents, if you want to start communicating with, with Braden better via email, uh, he'd like to have you on that email list, so please let him know uh, what email you would like to uh, use for his communication. And one more time, I want to announce this again this morning in case you missed it last week. We had a lot of people out last week on, on holiday, and I think we'll probably have a few more this week. But Braden Miller has accepted the full-time youth minister job here at Berea, and we're glad to have him effective immediately. So we're grateful for everything he's doing for our, for our teenagers and, and for our, uh, our church here. One other thing I want to mention, if I can pull this up on my phone, I took a screenshot of it. Uh, 
Cindy uh, Mangrum wanted me to uh, mention this and keep this young lady in your prayers. Uh, she's requesting prayers for her, co her cousin Donna's uh, daughter, Savannah, right? Savannah is 27 years old. She tested positive for corona, and she has pneumonia on top of that. She's very sick in the hospital, right, and uh, she's receiving blood transfusion, I think. Is that right, Lee? So only 27 years old. Yeah, yeah. So only 27 years old. Keep her in your prayers, if you will. Her name is, uh, is Savannah. Uh, so Ms. Mangrum wanted me to make sure we announced that. I think that is all I've got. I'll turn it back over to Brady, and uh, we'll continue our worship. The next song this morning is God is Love. Please stand as we sing. <laughs> Come let us all unite to sing God is love. Let heaven and earth their praises bring God is love. Let every soul from sin awake each in his heart sweet music make and sing with us for Jesus sake for God is love God is love God is love come let us all unite to sing that God is love oh tell to earth's remote please. Next song will be Here I Am to Worship, and after this will be led in Scripture by Joe Sims, and then in Prayer by John Bryan. Humbly you came to 
Here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God. You're altogether lovely, altogether worthy, altogether wonderful to me. Here I am to worship, here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. You're altogether lovely, altogether worthy, altogether wonderful to me. Beauty that made this heart This morning I'll be reading from 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18. Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Would you pray with me? Most holy God, how excellent is your name. We thank you for this day and, and all the many blessings you give us. Dear God, uh, we thank you for your grace and your mercy that you show us each and every day. Although we're not deserving, you love us in spite of us. Dear God, we thank you for uh, this group here at Berea and each member, our leaders, our elders, our deacons, our staff. Thank you for riding along with us here, dear God, keeping us out of the ditch and on the main road, Lord. Dear God, we, we look around us and, and you see what we see. And uh, uh, although we don't understand it, you do. Uh, our, our world's sick. We're, we're sick of, uh, in this virus, we're sick, we're, we're sick in this virus. We let petty things bother us, but, but God, we know that that's, the, that's Satan creeping in, and, and we just ask you to look for you to, for deliverance. Look to your word. Keep us entrenched in the Bible and, and uh, reading and studying and, and worshiping you. Lord, uh, for us to, to remain focused and to remain in the spirit, Lord, we got to remain in you. And uh, although that's hard at times because of all the distractions that, uh, that we get guided elsewhere. Dear God, just keep us focused. Keep our heart tender. Let us love each other and, uh, and love you. Dear God, a, a number of our members are sick and uh, cannot be with us. We just ask you to continue to be with those folks. God, you've, you brought a lot of people back to us that, that have been sick, and we thank you for that. Dear God, there's a number here that have lost loved ones and friends that have lost loved ones. Dear God, just comfort those folks and uh, wrap your arms around them like, uh, uh, like you can and, and will. And just embrace them and let them know that, that they are in our, in our prayers. Thank you for Jesus and uh, for sending him here to, to live like us and to... to Take that hit on the cross, dear God. We uh, thank you for that sacrifice. Makes it possible for us to have a home with you in the end. Dear God, be with our speaker today as he brings the word. Thank you for Jake and Anna and their family. Dear God, continue to be with our congregation as we move forward in, in searching for a, a pulpit minister. We thank you for uh, bringing Braden to us. Just continue to guide us, lead us, and direct us, and forgive us when we fail thee. In Christ's name, amen.
Next song this morning, we owe thou fount of every blessing. O thou fount of every blessing, turn my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing, call for songs of loudest praise. Teach me ever to adore thee, may I still thy goodness prove, while the hope of endless glory fills my heart with joy and love. Here I raise my Ebenezer, hither by thy help I've come, and I hope by thy good pleasure safely to Wandering from the fold of God, he to rescue me from danger interposed his precious blood. Oh, to grace, how great a debtor, daily I'm constrained to be. Let thy goodness like a fetter bind my wandering heart to thee. Never let me wander from thee. Never leave the God I love. Here's my heart, oh, take and seal it, seal it for thy courts of This morning as we, uh, before our lesson is brought to us, we'll sing a number 708, Walking in Sunlight. And again, if you would, please stand as we sing. Mm-hmm. Walking in sunlight all of my journey, over the mountains, through the deep vale. Jesus has said, I'll never forsake thee, promise divine that never can fail. Heavenly sunlight, heavenly sunlight, flooding my soul with glory divine. Hallelujah, I am rejoicing, singing His praises, Jesus is mine. Shadows around me, shadows above me, never can see. Savior and guide, He is the light, in Him is no darkness, ever I'm walking close to His side. Heavenly sunlight, heavenly sunlight, flooding my soul with glory divine. Hallelujah, I am rejoicing, singing His praise. Jesus is mine. In the bright sunlight, ever rejoicing, pressing my way to mansions above, singing his praises, gladly I'm walking, walking in sunlight, sunlight of love. Heavenly sunlight, heavenly sunlight, flooding my soul divine. Hallelujah, I am rejoicing, singing His praises, Jesus is mine. Be seated, please. I'm happy to uh, introduce Jacob uh, Ravslut. I got to know Jacob several years ago when he and his wife Anna moved to town. Uh, Jacob is the Southeast Operations Director for Tennessee Hydrovac. If you're wondering what that is, uh, that's those big machines, um, big as a dump truck or bigger, that have a big old vacuum cleaner on it. 
okay? And they, they throw water into ditches and underground, and then they suck it back out. That's the layman's term for it, but uh, anyway, that's what they do. So instead of blasting the line out and making buildings fall down, they just shoot a bunch of water in there, and then they <laughs> suck it back out. So um, he told me that, and that's how I described it. Um, he studied Bible at uh, Memphis School of Preaching. Uh, he and his wife, Anna, have three kids, two girls and a boy. They attend Highland Heights uh, Church of Christ, and um, he's, he's filled in there several times. They're in search of a preacher as well, so uh, Jacob's on the rotation there. And um, so I'm just happy to have uh, Jacob Ravslute here to bring us the message. Jake. Good morning. Is this working? Yeah. Good day. <laughs> I always talk loud, and I always think that I can hear myself, and halfway through the sermon, they're like, your mic wasn't on, but it's so good to be here. I want to uh, thank you for the opportunity to let me speak here to the elders and to your members. Uh, I always enjoy walking around and going around and seeing other people, and it makes me excited of what heaven's going to be like. There's a lot of people out there that I, I never got to meet, and I look forward to the day in heaven we can all be together in one place. And so... This morning, something I would like to talk to you about just for a couple minutes, five things from Jesus' teachings that will help us improve our lives today. Uh, so if you uh, live stream Highland Heights, you heard this sermon. So uh, I heard some people say, oh, hey, we watched you on Highland Heights, and so you've already heard this one. But it's okay. This is one of them sermons that we can, list, we can listen to a couple of times, not because I preach it, because Jesus taught it. And so it's imperative that, especially in the life in which we live right now, uh, if we can be honest with each other, 2020 has been a rough year. Uh, we can all say that, and wholeheartedly, 2020 has not been an ideal year. There's a lot of things that are happening in this year that are new to me. I've never seen in my lifetime, and chances are you've never seen in your lifetime. And so we go throughout our day, and we're going throughout our weeks, and we're asking ourselves, how can I improve my life? Because when a study was done with a general group saying, in 2020, we're halfway through the year, in 2020, have you felt yourself improve, stay neutral, or, or feel depressed or decreased? The general study was either neutral or stayed decreased. The reason being is because what is there to really improve on? What is, what's the benefit? And unfortunately, throughout this life, we keep asking ourselves, what's going to happen next? What's going to throw the, what's the next curveball? Is how, it, how the general feeling is. And so I ask myself, what can we do to improve our lives and to ask ourselves, what can I be doing throughout my life and throughout my day to improve my spiritual life and also my personal life? Because that's the ultimate goal. No matter what age of life you're in, if you're young or age in faith, you want to ultimately grow, and you want to ultimately say that I am constantly pressing forward and moving forward to the prize lives ahead. And so these things this morning, I hope that we can apply these to our lives. These are five things that I came up with. These are not the only five things. There's many other things that we can do to improve our lives, but I hope that through these five things, we together can help improve each other's lives. So number one this morning, love. This is one of them things that when we look at this, we think, well, yeah, that's a simple one, to love. But love is so much more than what, than what you and I say. So I love my spouse, my spouse loves me, I love you, you love me, right? But Jesus says that we are to love a certain way. I want you to notice what's said here in Matthew chapter 22, verse number 36 through 40. They just found out that the Sadducees were silenced by Jesus, the Pharisees are trying to trick Jesus, and they say, teacher and master, what is the greatest commandment? Now, they're expecting him to say, well one of the Ten Commandments, or one of the things of times of old, but Jesus comes back and gives them the ultimate answer. He says, you shall love, when Jesus says you shall, that's not an option. He says, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your might, because this is the first and great commandment. The second one is just like to it. So the second one I'm about to tell you is just as important as this first one here. He says, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. You shall love your neighbor who you don't agree with. You shall love your neighbor who you don't like, you don't support. Love your neighbor that you don't agree with. You see, in the world in which we live, there's a lot of things going on that I don't agree with. I'm going to be honest with you. That's not my place, and right now it's not really relevant to talk about them things. What is relevant, though, is that whether I agree with something that's going on in the world around me or whether I don't agree with what's going on, Jesus says you are to love. And so when I look at the world around me and I think, I don't agree with this. I don't like what's happening. I don't, I don't like all the different changes, these movements, all these things that are going on around me. I don't like it. What can I do about this situation? Jesus says, you can love. You can be a light. You can show those around you, me, 
let Jesus show in your life? And so when I ask myself, how can I improve my life? I ask myself, what can I do? Because there's a lot of things. I watch news. I watch the social media platforms. And, and there, there's not much that I can do, I feel like. I feel as though I can't do much about these things. But I can love. I can show love. Do I have to like it? No. Do I have to support it? No. But do I have to love? Yes. I have to show love towards that person. A couple years ago, I hired a, well, we, we put, or not a couple years, I'm sorry, a couple months ago, we put a, a job posting out, and a lady applied for this job, and before I hire someone, I, I asked my wife to go, and she's really good at finding things on social media and about people, you know, just to make sure that you're going to fit in with our team, you know, that you're not, you don't post things, you know, just, we, we do that. So, anyways, found out that this woman who was a top candidate, was a lesbian and was married to a woman, which you can't discriminate against that, obviously, but uh, she came, came into the office, and, and we interviewed each other back and forth, and after interviewing, I, found, I, I decided we were going to offer her the position. She was doing the position wonderfully, no issues whatsoever. So we got to talking, and we got pretty close over the courses of the time that we've worked together, and we had to go to Chattanooga one day, and she said, can I just ride with you? And I said, yeah, come on, let's go, which wasn't uncommon, and on the way back from Chattanooga, she said, Jake, I want to talk to you about something. I said, okay. And she said, I, I don't really want to have a secret from you. I don't want it to jeopardize my, my employment here. She says, I respect you. I, 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 I admire you. You're a Bible man. You preach. I understand this. But I am a lesbian. I'm married to a woman. And I said, I understand. I know that. And her eyes got that big. She was so surprised that I already knew this. And she said, so is this going to affect my employment? I said, no, it won't affect your employment. And she said, well, is it going to change anything? She goes, I, just, I didn't want to have this secret from you. I said, no, it's not going to change anything. I said, but there's something I need to tell to you about. I said, I'm not going to hide it from you. And this isn't boss employee. This is just friend to friend. I said, I don't support that. I don't like that. But the Bible teaches me, and I want to show you what the Bible says about this. And by having a loving attitude towards the situation, instead of coming across judgmental saying, oh, you're going to hell acting as though that sin was greater than my sin, the door was left open. And by, by conversation, the, 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 the thought of, hey, maybe I can go to church and study and learn about what Jesus wants me to do, no, she, no one told her what the Bible says. Everyone just always said, you're going to hell if you stay in that. You see, what I'm trying to say is, sometimes we ask ourselves the question, why do I got to love when there's so much hatred going on? Why do I have to show love when I don't agree with something? when I don't like something. Because if we show hatred in our lives towards people that we don't agree with, we don't support, we don't like, the chances of that door is going to shut dramatically. And if we show love and we show Jesus in our life in that situation, the door can remain open. Through conversations, op the possibility of coming to services is, is on the table. But something happened in the past, I'm not really sure what that was. But I want us to see that I don't agree with it. I don't support it. But because Jesus tells me I need to love, I have to show that love to that person. What else does Jesus say about love? I want us to notice something together this morning from 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Now, this is considered the love chapter of the Bible. And I want us to notice something as a group together. So the first part of this says, this, Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, and I have not love, I am a noisy gong or a cleansing symbol. What he's saying is, if I can do all these cool things, but I don't have love, I'm just a noisy mess. He says, and if I, if I uh, have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge and have all the faith, says, so I can move mountains, but have not love. he says, I am nothing. And if I gave away all that I have and deliver up my body to be burned, but have not love, I gain nothing. What in essence he's saying, if I can do all these cool things, if I can do all these other things that, that's glorifying, but I, I do not have love, it's all worthless. And so we see the importance of love in this text. Now this is what I want us to do together this morning. You may have done this. But I want us to do it together as a group. I believe that this should be done daily, if not, if not weekly. I didn't come up with this. This was taught to me. But I love to do this. This is a self-examination test to ask ourselves, what can we improve on? And so I want us to do this as a group this morning. In the Bible, in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, starting in verse 4, the blanks up here are love. Okay? So if you read through the Bible and you come to this chapter, you're going to see love is kind, love is perfect. What I want to do is I'm going to read this and I'm going to say my name in the blank. I want you to say your name in the blank, okay? And then what I want us to do is I want us to see what are some things that we can work on. Notice with me this text. Jake is patient and is kind. 
Jake does not envy or boast, is not arrogant or rude. Jake does not insist on its own way. Jake is not irritable or resentful. Jake does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Jake bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things, and Jake's love never ends. You see, friends, I can read the word love in that text all day long. But when I see my name in it, it gives me personally a whole different meaning. And I see, you know what, I can probably be more patient, I can probably be more kind. The things that I don't agree with, the things that I don't like, I can probably not envy or boast about. Maybe not be arrogant about me or rude. Maybe not insist on my own way, being open to different possibilities. Maybe not be irritable, resentful, not rejoicing at wrongdoings. And there's a lot of things when I see my name in there that I realize, man, I really got some things I need to work on for me personally. And I can, like I said, I can see love all day long. But when I put my name in there, it gives me a whole different meaning. And so I want us to see that Jesus tells us that we have to love in different situations. Now notice what, what this ends. When you replace hate with love and anger with kindness, your life will improve. You say, Jake, I don't have hatred. Well, here's, here's what I get with this, is that your heart has room for two things. Love or hate. That's it. And when you don't show forth love in situations, that allows room for hatred. Now, you may not publicly say, I hate something. You may not go out and say, hey, I hate you. But in your mind, you may think it. You may be watching TV and you think, I really don't like that. That's allowing hatred to come into your heart. And that's why we have to be so careful when we self-examine our lives to say, am I allowing hatred to enter into my body, into my heart? And am I pushing love out in all things? So think about that, church. Number two this morning. Can you click me in the next one, buddy? Live the golden rule. Now, this is one of them things that's pretty standard. We understand this, this concept. I was taught this at a young age, right? Live the golden rule. You want to be treated this way, treat others that way. Notice Matthew chapter, verse, chapter 7, verse 12. He says, therefore, whatever you want others to do to you, do also to them, for this is the law and the prophets. We want to improve our life, live the golden rule. Treat others as you would want to be treated. And then we need to improve our lives today by treating those around you with kindness and love and respect. And let, uh, let, G, let others see Jesus in your life. Now that's a lot easier said than done, isn't it? I, I work in the secular field. So I, I'm in construction. And, and if anyone's in construction or blue-collar work, I'm, and I'm, I don't know because I'm not in an office setting, but it, I know construction's rough, man. I mean, there's, you have the, the jokes all day long. You have people treating you like garbage all day long. It's just, it's just a constant back and forth. And, and it's, I'm going to be honest with you. It's hard to treat others the way that you want to be treated. It's something that I struggle with because you're not treated that way. But for me personally, I have to remind myself that if I want to improve my life and I have to worry about Jake Gravelswood in this situation, if I want to improve my life, I have got to first love that person and number two, I have to live the golden rule and treat that person the way that I want to be treated. Does that mean that if I do that, that that person is going to automatically treat me? No, that's not what that means. What it means is that when Jesus was mistreated and Jesus was made fun of, and Jesus was, 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 was going through what he went through, he still loved and treated those around him with respect and dignity, and he never looked down and got down to that level to the ones that were treating him wrong. And we say, okay, that was Jesus, but we are striving to live like Jesus. That's our goal. Our goal is to live like Jesus. So we ask ourselves the question, oh man, you know, I, I, all, all this around me is negative. There's so many things going around around me that are negative. How do I treat those with respect? Just remember, because Jesus did. Because that's what Jesus did. And throughout our lives, when we are faced with these decisions and we ask ourselves, how can I improve my life? We can look at this and think, I need to treat others the way that Jesus would have treated them. Notice with me, 1 Peter 2.17, he says, Honor all people, love the brotherhood, fear God, and honor the king. Do nothing from selfishness or empty conceit, but with hu humility of mind. Notice, regard one another as more important than yourselves. Regard others as more important than yourselves. Number three this morning, communicate clearly with God. Ask you a question and, and ask you, you know, you have to, in order to improve your life, friends, I meant to say this earlier, we got to be honest with ourselves and say, you know what, I need to improve on that. So I want to ask you a question. What kind of prayers do you pray? What kind of prayers do you communicate with your father about? What are some things that you pray about? What kind of goals do you have? What kind of, what kind of things are you trying to accomplish in life? Now, there's nothing wrong with simple, simple prayers. 
But is that all we pray? Or do we pray to God letting Him know, I know that I have the faith in You, Father, that You, that you can do all things. The things that are going on in the world around us, do we pray to Him about? The situations that we feel as though are not in our control, do we pray to God about? You say, Jake, God knows, I, God knows that I know that He's in control. Yeah, but he, does, does, he know, does He hear you say it to Him? Does He hear us say, Father, I know that You're in control of all things. Brother Brian's prayer this morning. Don't like what's going on. Father, we know that you're in control of this. Do we pray prayers that can move mountains? Nothing wrong, like I said, about simple prayers or, 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 or short prayers. Nothing wrong with that, but is that all we do? And do we sometimes not pray to God the way that, that, that maybe uh, could, could, could... Notice it with me. I lost my train. I'm sorry. First, First Thessalonians 16. Rejoice always, pray constantly, give thanks in everything, for this is God's will for you in Jesus Christ. God loves you. And as your Heavenly Father, He stands ready to help you in communicating with Him through prayer. Now, something that I, I it took me a long time to realize this, and, and it's just, uh, I'm not as fast of a learner as most people, but the fact that I can, I can go privately, and I can get on my knees, and I can directly pray to my Father is one of the, the greatest things as a Christian that I feel as though I can do. Now, there's, there's other things I understand, but to directly communicate with Him. I don't have to go somewhere. I don't have to be at a certain place. I don't have to have an intercessor or something besides Jesus. But I'm saying, I, I, I can directly go to the Father in prayer. And at that moment, I can pray to Him about anything I want. Now, if I pray for a million dollars in my bank account tomorrow morning, does that mean I'm going to have a million dollars in my bank account? No. That's not what that means. We know what I mean when I say this, I hope. To pray to God and say, Lord, I don't know what's going on in the world around us. I don't know what's happening. I don't like what's happening. I don't support what's happening. But, Father, I know that you're in control. And believe it and to pray to it. And improving our lives by giving God the control and giving God the glory and letting God take care of these things. What kind of prayers do we pray to God? Number four this morning, have faith. So not only do I need to love to improve my life and live the golden rule and pray with, to God, but I also need to have faith. Notice with me Matthew chapter 21 and verse 21. Jesus replied, Truly I tell you, if you have faith and do not doubt, not only can you do what you did to the fig tree, but also you can say to this mountain, go throw yourself in the sea, and it will be done. Matthew 21, 21. Hebrews eleven six says, And without faith it is impossible to please him, for whoever draws near to God must believe that he is, and that he has rewarded them that diligently seek him. What is he saying? Without faith, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not yet seen. So without that, it is impossible to please him. You've got to have faith. When we pray to God, God, I know you're in control. Do we believe that? Let me be honest with you, church. I've been a Christian for some time. Sometimes I feel like I'm a, I'm a strong Christian. Other times I don't. Just being real with you. And there are times where I'll be driving in my truck or I'll be, I'll be thinking throughout the day and I'll ask the question in my head or maybe I'll even say, I'll say, God, where are you at? Where are you at? You, look at all this that's going on around us. Look at people dying. He is dying. Things being destroyed. Where you at, God? And then I got to remind myself that, man, Jake, you prayed to God saying, I know you're in control. Have that faith that he is in control. Have that faith that you know that, he can, that you can move mountains with that faith. Faith in Jesus Christ means trusting him Remembering him and following his teachings. Are we going to ask the question, God, where are you at? I think we will. I think everyone in this room can admit that we've asked that question one time or not. But to have the faith to know that God's hand is above everything. And that God, God's, God is in the palm of his hand. It is conviction that he is the son of God. And when we provide room in our heart to have faith in Christ, you will notice your life improve. Notice this. This isn't mine, but I love this. Those who leave everything in God's hand will eventually see God's hand in everything. You see, leave it in God's hand. God, I know you're in control. God, I know you have this. I have faith that everything is taken care of. When you start living your life that way, and you start seeing your, improved li your, your life improve that way, you'll start seeing God's hand in everything around you. Number five this morning, freely forgive. So not only do I need to love and live the golden rule and uh, have faith and communicate to God, uh, uh, communicate to God with prayer. 
I also need to freely forgive. Notice this verse, Ephesians 4.32. Be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving each other, just as God in Christ has also forgiven you. My Heavenly Father will also do the same to you if each of uh, you does not forgive his brother from his heart. Matthew 18.35. Colossians 3.13 says, Make room for each other's faults and forgive anyone who offends you. Anyone who offends you. Let me be honest with you, church. We live in a world where being offended and our feelings are being hurt and things that we don't agree with and, and we feel as though we're, we're offended often. That this is just a common thing now. When we look at this, make room for each other's faults and forgive anyone who offends you. Notice the definition. Forgiving is to pardon or excuse someone from blame for an offense or a misdeed. And the scripture refers to forgiveness in two different ways. Number one, when we ask for forgiveness for the things we've done in our life. And number two, when someone's done us wrong and we forgive them for those who hurt or offend us. By freely offering forgiveness, we can unshackle ourselves from the negative feelings that hold us back. And this is about improving your life, your joy, and your happiness. We ask ourselves the question, so you're telling me that I have to forgive someone who's done me wrong? They didn't ask for forgiveness. Yes, that's what I mean. That's one of the hardest things to do. Wednesday night here, Brother Mangum talked about, I knew that because I always check where I'm preaching to make sure I'm not going to preach about the same thing. <laughs> so I did. But he was, talking about, he was talking about the verse that says, you know, you got to forgive others or your heavenly father won't forgive you. And the thing that is so, it's so true, we say, why do I have to forgive? Listen, people have done me wrong. I'm going to be honest with you. And I'm not the only one in this room that's been done wrong. And then I look at the situation and I say, so I got to forgive this person when they're not even asking for forgiveness? Yes, that's what that means. Why? Here's why, church. Because when you hang on to that hatred, you hang on to that, that, that situation, you, you're dwelling upon the negative things that are happening in your life. When you do that, you are holding yourself back from reaching forward to the pride of lives ahead. You cannot move forward when you're focusing on the past. Paul said, I am forgetting those things which are behind. The behind is anything in the past, right? So the last thing I just said was in the past. Paul says, I forget those things which are behind, and I reach forward to the pride of lives ahead. In order for a person to truly move forward to the pride of lives ahead, you have got to forgive and forget. That's a big one. Forgive and forget. Forgive the person and forget about it. Why? Because your father has forgiven and forgot the things that you've done when you asked for it. Can you imagine if God came to you and said, well, back in 2017 you did this, and 2018 you did this. We'd all be in a mess of hurt, wouldn't we? But God says, I have forgiven you. Your sins have been washed away. You are cleansed. The things that you have done, I remember no more. I forgive and I forgive. Another reason why it's so important to forgive and forget is because when Jesus was on the cross, there was people who were spitting at him, offending him, hurting him, treating him wrong, beating him, hurt his feelings, offended him. And one of the last words that he said on the cross was, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. I want you to think about that kind of love. I want you to think about that kind of forgiveness. I want you to think about the things that, that we looked at. By loving, by for, forgiving freely, and by praying, living the golden rule and having the faith, we can truly improve our life. You may be here this morning saying, you know what, I want to improve my life. I want, I want, to, I want to really improve my life. I want to leave this place improved. You can receive that forgiveness. That's the ultimate way to improve your life. Walk out of here forgiving and God forgetting. Maybe you're here and you've never been a Christian. Never been baptized. Never, never obeyed the gospel's command. That's a sure way to improve your life. To walk out of this building saying, I am forgiven, I am free. I answered the gospel call, my sins were washed away. God forgave me, he forgot them. And I can walk out of this place a new and improved person reaching forward to the prize which lies ahead. This morning, if you need to be baptized or you need to ask for forgiveness on things in your life, I pray that you make that known and leave this place better than the person that you were when you came in. We can help you in any way this morning. Come now, together we stand and while we sing.
Tis the fount of love from the source above, and he bids us all freely drink. Will you come to the fountain free? Will you come? Tis for you and me, thirsty soul, hear the welcome call. Tis a fountain open for all. There's a living stream with a crystal gleam from the throne of life. Now it flows while the waters roll. Let the weary soul hear the call that forth freely goes. Will you Be seated, please. This morning, as we prepare our hearts and minds for the Lord's Supper, we'll sing, And Can It Be? On your way in, you should have grabbed the communion packet. If you did not, please raise your hand, and Ronnie in the back has some available that he can bring to you. As, um, as always, we will ask um, that after we partake of the, of the Lord's Supper, if you'll just hold this in your hand. And then as we dismiss, you can throw that in a garbage can on the way out, and that will help to uh, allow us to provide better social distancing and health. Mm -hmm. And can it be that I should gain an interest in my Savior? Died he for me who caused his pain, for me who scorned his perfect love. Amazing love, how can it be that you, my God, would die for me? Amazing Claim your mercy. 
Say immense and free. No greater love will e'er be known. For all oh my God, it found out me. Amazing love, how can it be that you, my God, would die for me? Amazing love, how can it be that you, my God, would die for me? say we have fellowship with him and yet we walk in darkness, we are lying and are not practicing the truth. If we walk in the light as he is, as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Let's pray. Father, thank you for today. Thank you for the opportunity and the blessing of
so thankful that you can be a part of our worship service today. What a blessing it's been to be here. Thank you so much for a great lesson. I appreciate it. Uh, you uh, were unable and we wish to be able to uh, give this morning. Of course, we have a collection basket on the back uh, table that you can put uh, your contribution in the back uh, on your way out. You can, of course, give online under text giving. Um, either one of those would be great. Um, as we dismiss it, in, in an effort to kind of maintain social distancing. We ask that everybody on this side of the auditorium to exit out to the back of the auditorium. But on this side, go out to the side door over here. We have a trash can here for you to throw away your uh, communion packets as well. And then after we sing our final song, thank you, Lord, for being led into a simple prayer by Don Young. Thank you, Lord.